I am so sick of looking like a slob. And my TikTok has caught on, flooding my feed with color analysis videos. Over the years, I've slowly tried to build a more intentional wardrobe that allows me to effortlessly put an outfit together for every situation. And as much as I try, I'm constantly left saying, I have nothing to wear. I got some staple pieces, but how do celebrities always look so effortlessly chic? They have stylists. <sighs> I've always dreamed of having a stylist which seems like a big fat waste of money, considering if I called the paparazzi on myself, they wouldn't even show up. So this week I'm putting on my journalist hat to see what it would be like to hire a celebrity stylist to do a color analysis on me and teach me how to buy clothes that actually suit my body. And while we're at it, we might as well see how a professional human stylist compares to a $20 AI app. So step inside my closet, what I have. A lot of black hoodies. But like, here's an example. I have this sweater and I love it. But the only option I have is like black pants. Don't get me wrong, a sweater and leggings can be a fit. But like, I don't wear it like a fit. I wear it like leggings and a hoodie. I want it to be like chic. Like when people have the right boots, a little headband, a fit. It's a bit more of my like casual stuff. Here's a perfect example. I brought this gray t-shirt. Sometimes I look sick, sometimes it looks good. But I never wear it because I have nothing to go with it. Like. It's okay. I just have a lot of items like this. Does black and brown work? See, I just don't know how to match a lot of my stuff. And I'm not completely useless. Like I have put in some effort. Editing Kelty here. I also wanna give credit to Elbat. I watched her video about a year ago when it came out and hers is awesome. And that's what sparked the idea for me to try this experiment as well. I think it's awesome. She's awesome. Go check out her video. I'm gonna pin it in my top comment and in the description. Seasonal color analysis became popular in the 1980s when American color theorist Susan Cagle combined color psychology with seasonal palette theory. It became the process of examining a person's skin tone, eyes, hair, and lip to create a color palette that complements them best. Now for my AI stylist. First, Thap I'm choosing is Style DNA. Thap cost me $30 for a three month subscription and promised that by using a simple selfie, it could perform a color analysis and create me a personal color palette and recommend thousands of items and outfits that match my unique body shape and palette. I'm now gonna do my color analysis. So it's gonna tell me the colors that look best on. This is the thing I'm always suspicious about. How accurate is this? Like my eyes change color in different lighting in photos, not in reality. I'm not a lizard, lizard or am I? I have to be in daylight, face the window, avoid direct sunlight on my face. Analyzing. Four, then it spits out my results. 40,000 of them. I don't want that. I want like 12, you know? Like I don't want a menu with 80 items. I want a menu with five to execute well. Okay, my style formula. My color type is light spring, which consists of these colors. It called my style type flamboyant, which I think is the opposite of the Scandinavian chic feminine crows. See, the crows are angry. The crows are like, do not you be flamboyant. We want you in darkness. Well, now that we know what an algorithm thinks looks best on me, let's take it to human professional. Meet professional stylist, Sarah D'Arcy. Sarah, my stylist, she's gonna explain what exactly does a stylist do? So as a stylist, I'm responsible for curating a client's look and really executing their vision. Look at what's working for the client right now, what's not working, remove the stuff that's not working, and just open up that space to bring in more of what they really love. I'm close, but I can never fully execute like this Pinterest-esque wardrobe. And a lot of clients feel that way. Uh, my role is really about pulling it all together and really helping support um, my clients to really feel wonderful in what they're wearing because clothing is so personal. So I believe today we're gonna do measurements, colors, see what colors kind of look good on me. We're gonna go through my closet, see what's working, what's not working, and then we'll touch base in a couple weeks after she has her brainstorm. Step one, she took my measurements, waist, hip, legs, inseam, arms. Step number two, she took photos of me that she'll use later on to figure out what colors suit my skin tone and hair best. Three, ask me my personal preferences. Colors I like wearing. I'll wear all colors, but the two I've never really liked on me were purples and yellows, very like mauve. Stuff like that I find like just makes me look sick. What I would typically wear for go through my closet. The method to my madness in my closet, I showed her 
the things I wear the most, things I don't wear, and things I struggle with. I have a couple pieces that have been gifted to me or I really love, but I just don't know how to style them. So they sit in my closet, even though I'm obsessed with them. Here's my going out outfits. Mm -hmm. So this is probably my most seen things. My blazer I wear all the time. Yeah. And number five, declutter. We didn't actually do this because I actually don't have that many stuff. These actually think, actually, I'm just gonna get rid of them now. They, they, could, they could serve a better home. Over the last few years, I haven't bought that many new pieces because I knew I was getting my implants out, so I didn't buy clothes for a little while. So I donated a lot, sold a lot, and now I've kind of struggled with getting tops for my body, like what to keep, what not, what's more flattering. And I have definitely bought some things because, you know, I need clothes, but I haven't fully completed like the basic foundations of a wardrobe. So in that time that would normally be decluttering, we pulled out items that I loved, but have struggled to style. We did get rid of a few jackets or things that I did donate. There was a couple that I'm like, okay, I don't wear this anymore. Pre-2020, I was that girl that got dressed up every day. No, not fully, I'm not in heels and a ball gown, but I mean, jeans, a cute top, hair done, a, a fit, it was a fit. But then of course, three years ago, the world changed. And since then, I've resorted to what I would call safe outfits. And it felt like a waste to wear any of my nice pieces because I was scared I was gonna wreck them. But then they never got worn, so what's the point of them? So no more, now we are getting dressed up every day because when I dress up, even if it's just for work and no one's gonna see me, I feel better about myself. And so I do more things and then more productive. And it's just one of those things that makes me feel better about myself. Okay, I've been playing around with the style DNA and doing some quizzes and now it's a bit more like me. Before it described my style, it recommends as flamboyant, which is clearly how I dress. <laughs> uh, now it is calling me a light spring, body type inverted triangle, and now my style type is dramatic, which I guess is closer to what I, you would see me wearing if I were to pick, but once again, I'm not the expert here, AI and my stylist is. So now I'm going to go purchase said items to the best of my abilities and do a fashion show. Another thing I'm noticing, it really wants me in this like ugh, mauve light salmony pink and yellows. I don't like wearing that, I don't think it looks good on me. I'm just about to hop on Zoom meeting follow up with Sarah. Hey, good, how are you doing? Awesome. Okay. Sarah has emailed me back for my, it'll have my body guide and best style, color analysis, and list of styling recommendations. Let's open it up. Okay, here's just my mood boards. First, my body type. Okay, so there's the classic six women's body type, and I've always considered myself an inverted triangle because I have no hips. I have a little bit of waist, wider shoulders, and I'm shaped like a Dorito. But she has me as like hourglass. And so body types, Scarlett Johansson, the most beautiful woman on earth. Beautiful women, but I don't think it's my body type. <laughs> Maybe when I had implants, um, but it said don't oversize garments, which adds extra volume to shoulders and hips. I don't have hips. Once again, this said first draft, so maybe, do I not know what my own body is? Okay, the best skirts, best jackets, best coat styles, best pants styles, and my top colors. I am a light spring. Interesting, she has me as light spring. What did AI have me as? Light spring, okay. But here she's like, you are a light spring as my primary color, but my secondary aspect is warm, meaning warm color stuff looks better on me than colder. So here's like where she kind of elevates, I'm not just light spring, customized it, and here's what's different. Here was the color palette I got from AI. And there's very few colors I loved in here. I hate yellows. I don't like these mauves. Versus here has all my favorite colors and the colors that I think look good on me. It has navy blue. I love red. I love greens. I love light blue. I even like pinks. I mean, the only thing is a lot of yellows on both and a little purple. And I've always been like purple and yellow looks awful on me. Maybe I'm missing something. Goes in the hewer. Metals. It says I can wear both cool and warm, but gold looks best, so. <clears throat> Now for styles. Love, love, like some parts. Don't mind, like. Don't love the purse, love the shoes. Okay outfit, mm. Okay, I'm going to go write some notes now. I will send her back a bunch of stuff and I think it will be a lot of back and forth until she gets to know me. And I'm sure that's how it kinda is like with all stylists, like Hailey Bieber and that, is at the start, it's like a relationship. You gotta get to know each other. First few times gonna be rough. And then over time, you can read each other's mind. 
So I've made some notes and sending back to Sarah and let's see her response. This might seem bossy, but this is one of my biggest things with this 2024 series I'm working on is like being assertive and putting up boundaries and saying my needs because Kelty up till a week ago, which is big. Oh yeah, this is fine. Thank you. And just big, I spent all that money. And I'm not happy. And I don't want to wear everything. And some of the stuff was great, but now I'm realizing that's a good thing. Like, women, we're not a, being a bitch or bossy when we just assert what we want. Like I'm not sitting here and be like, what Sarah did was bad. It's just not 100% me because she doesn't know 100% me. And it's, so here's me actually saying kindly, assertively, with confidence and of respect of my stylist that this is what I liked and this is what I didn't and this is who I am. <sighs> Just had my meeting with Sarah and this went so much better. Now we're really getting a vibe for each other. And interesting, as you said, the reason I'm an hourglass is because my chest and hips are the same size and my waist is just tinier than them. Like, am I a Kardashian? I'll take it, I'll take the compliment because no one has ever been like Kelty that she's thick. Oh my God, this is gonna be expensive. I don't, I'm a little scared because she's telling me all these items and I'm like, yes, I do want that. I want that, I want that. Adding it up in my head, I'm like, is everything she pulls I have to buy? So I'm a little concerned now. Oh boy, what have I gotten myself into? Okay, we got lots of blues, which is good. That's my favorite color. Some light pinks. This is shocking. A lot of yellows and purples. And I've always just said purples and yellows look awful on me. I just think yellow and purple look so good on brunettes. I pulled some clothes from my closet with colors recommended by my stylist. Here's a unique orange, a neutral color she recommended, one of my favorite colors, a baby blue, and then a bit more of a wacky color, this bright yellow. Now, if you're wondering, there is four seasons with color analysis, but actually 12 different subcategories. So that's why I'm light spring, not just spring. There's winter, spring, summer, fall. But in each of those seasons, there's different subsections. There's cool winter, bright winter, bright spring, warm spring, light spring, light summer, cool summer, soft summer, soft autumn, warm autumn, dark winter. I'm seeing the benefits of knowing your personal season, but here's where I think they fail. According to the internet, light spring should avoid emerald and deep greens. But do you have that one color that you know when you wear, people are like, wow, that is your color. For me, that's emerald green, mainly because my eyes are mostly green. They're three quarters green and the like quarter blue. They're really weird. But anyways, when I wear emerald green, they just pop and people always point it out. And so I've always been like, that's my color. So moving forward, I'm going to use my seasons as a guide, not law. Now here's where this investigation took a very surprising turn. But first, while we're on the topic of colors and the topic of green, I need to earn some green to pay for said video. And my favorite green is AG1. It's a simple daily habit that helps me knowing I'm taking something daily that helps my immune system, gut health, nutrient replenishment, focus, energy, and healthy aging. And I love the taste of it. Sometimes, here's a little hack, I add it to milk instead of water and it gives it this iced matcha latte vibe. It still tastes great in just water. I just like, I like to like spruce it up a little. Not only does it make sure my nutritional insurance is covered, my vitamins and minerals, but it's really seven supplements in ones. It's your adaptogens, prebiotics, probiotics, simple daily habit that just makes sure I'm covered across the board. And of course, I got an offer for you all. If you head to my link in the description, you will get a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 K2 plus five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. Thank you, AG1, for making this video literally possible. And yes, that last minute is what paid for the other 20 minutes of this video. Now the hurdle. I saw these clothes from my stylist. They were cute. They were me. I love them. I had no money left over to buy clothes after I spent the money on my stylist. And you may have noticed this was all filmed back in November. And I've sidelined this video after that moment of being like, what do I do? I had two options. One, participate in fast fashion and buy all the random clothes that AI recommended me. Number two, also buy all the clothes from my stylist and go even more into debt. And as the weeks passed by, I kept saying, I'll do this next week. I will do this next week. I will pay it next week. I'll do it next week. Then in December, I filmed my Q and A. One of you guys asked a question about finances. I suddenly like owed governments and medical things like 30 K. I was like, I don't have 30 K. And this really sparked something in me as I opened up about my own personal financial struggles. And over the following weeks, it really started changing the concept of my view of fashion and even like how I viewed this own video. The direct to consumer retail space is making some pretty big market moves. By 2018, digital ad spend in the US passed $100 billion. We're just allowing private companies to monitor us left, right and center. And it's on sale. 
Sure, I'll throw that in my cart. Every day we are bombarded by images of celebrities, influencers looking absolutely cute. This perfection, every outfit looks effortless and chic. And not to mention the ads. Like I was listening to a podcast this morning and I found out our TVs now sell our data. Big reason TVs are so cheap right now. They scrape an unbelievable amount of data from yep. you. TVs have decreased by an average of 97% since the year 2000. And I'm not just talking security. I just mean so they can perfectly target you because they know you watch Love Island with your boyfriend 8 p.m. every Tuesday. And so they know exactly the ads to market to you. And like, how can you be resistant of it? It's so perfectly what you want. And I'm genuinely exhausted by it. Just constantly be given these items that I'm like, oh, I do need that. Like, I genuinely need that. I want that. And then I make a list and I spend so much wasted hours being like, should I buy this? Shouldn't I buy I really need it. It would improve my life. I'll pay off the debt and deal with my finances next week. There's just one more thing. But when I do buy that thing, because I eventually break after seeing it for the 30th time, I feel guilty because I know I should have used that money towards my guilt, but also I have to live life. And I, I, I'm constantly torn between those two. It also made me realize wh wh what's my own role in this? I have a YouTube channel. You are watching this right now. You probably saw an ad. I gave you an ad for AG1. I, I'm, I know I realized the irony in this, but I did have to get an ad to pay for this video. That stylus was not cheap. <laughs> But just taking into account like my whole role in all this and just like my lack of knowledge of it all, I was like, I almost trust this video. I've put it off. Is I, I think I had this vision in my head that the stylist would put, and it really- This is expensive. Look at how many different conclusions I felt. Like this is the answer, this is how I concluded, this is how I make a good video for people they enjoyed for the algorithm. Who doesn't love a versus video? And my mind hurts from it. But I let myself process and I've had a lot of aha moments and then Ironically, during the same time, I started my new series, this new series you're watching, and this is episode five of it, and Her Way to Harmony. And this is documenting my journey as a creator, my fitness goals, my creative goals, making the videos I've always wanted to make, releasing music for you guys to listen to while you work out, and finding the beauty in my daily life, like making those little routine videos for you guys, and like how can we just find joy and having a little joy in your guys' life and finding that balance. But I can't deny one very important part of a balanced life is finances and I need to get my shit together. This is my step one. <sighs> Let's say it together. Comparison is the thief of joy. It's true, when we go on Instagram and see these influencers, their outfits are cute. They would look good on us. We would feel good for that day we bought it. We would, and we can't deny that. I started to see the irony of right before I scrolled Instagram, I didn't know this outfit existed. It was no mental capacity. As soon as I opened Instagram, see this cute outfit, now suddenly I'm spending all my day of like, should I buy that sweater? Will that sweater complete my capsule wardrobe? And I didn't even know that existed two minutes ago. Then I saw this amazing Instagram. How to dress better with clothes you already own, part six. And I watched a few of hers and then I had this light bulb moment. What would happen instead of me just blindly letting the algorithm choose for me, scrolling through Instagram, scrolling through Pinterest, finding these outfit ideas, just typing in brunch outfit and just scrolling and being like, oh, I do need that. I started searching for outfits on Pinterest with clothes I already have. Instead of saying brunch outfit, I would type in navy blue flare denim outfit. Now this is step one in a part of this series, which is gonna be my finances. This is cool. I did see my seasonal colors, which was eye-opening. I learned a lot more about styling clothes, like finding pants that suit my body type. Even learning that I guess I'm an hourglass shape. It just has to do with like my ratios, even though a lot of you are like, Kelty, you're, I know, it's funny, it's funny. I'm hourglass till I turn to the side. Oh God. Full confession, I did buy one outfit. So here is my final outfit I got because I needed a pair of snow boots for Sweden. So I was like, you know what, I will, just keep track of these outfits the stylist gave me and then over time, maybe save up for them and only really get them if I genuinely need them, which was snow boots because look at the snow in Sweden. Now I'm gonna leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger. This year, along with improving my fitness goals, just longevity and health, YouTube, my videography, editing, making better videos for you guys and getting better at music, I actually graduate from music production school this week. So I'm so excited and I will start releasing music for you guys' this workout. Very excited, but anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. <sighs> the one thing I do always scurry around is finances. I need to get my finances in order. I have debt. I have debt from school and medical expenses and I need to deal with it. I need to stop just be like, I'll deal with it next week. I have business expense. I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not, but I was thinking maybe we can do this together. It can just be part of this series. It should be one of the goals in, I think that health is physical, mental, emotional, I would say creative personally, spiritual and financial health. We do need to work on our financial health. Well, at least I do. Some of you are like, Kelty, I am an accountant. So together, let's start basing our finances on math instead of vibes, which I've been doing for my entire life. Um, but maybe, maybe just a little girl math, cause you know, 
finding that balance of let's work towards it, but enjoying life. <sighs> Starting with my first video, cliffhangers to leave you guys with. I'm going to attempt to pay off all my debt and show you how I do it. I'm declaring this because if it's on the internet, someone's going to call me out in a few months and be like, Kelty, I see you bought a new pair of pants. Where's your debt? Talk about it. <laughs> Have a great day. Go pet a dog. Love you guys. Bye.